All right, back with another video on some of the most hideout food to have ever been served on Master Chef. Just like this time from season eight. I don't know what to say. So what happened is, in season eight, the judges chose to keep Yachisia despite her serving an incomplete box of half-empty, unappetizing truffles that looked, excuse my French, dog shit. Meanwhile, they decided to eliminate Daniel, sending him home over a small piece of unmelted chocolate despite all the delicious flavors in his fully assembled box. So here's what went down. Incredible box of chocolate truffles. After losing the team challenge in episode 15, the blue team had to face the pressure test. What was it, you ask? Well, Christina Tosi decided to dish out the details. Yeah, so there were a total of nine truffles, three each of three different flavors. Now, here's a look at the first batch. Dark chocolate truffle with a homemade honey curry. And here's the second kind. And by the way, these are my personal favorite. Has a little bit of smoked salt, mm. bourbon, and toasted pecan. And hey, if anybody has perfected its recipe, be sure to send some over my way. And with that, here's a quick look at the third kind. Has the sweetest white chocolate and cherry truffle. So Christina challenged the contestants to replicate these truffles in 60 minutes. Yes. Talk to me. Have you made truffles before? And the inexperience soon started to show. Right off the bat, Chef Ramsay wasn't too thrilled with Yachesia's truffles. Proud of two of the truffles? Well, that's not good enough. And when he finally opened that box, he seemed horrified with what he found. Oh, no. It was so bad he threatened her with a one-spot elimination. And you know what? While most times I feel Chef Ramsay does exaggerate to build the shock factor, this time he was right. I mean, just look at this thing here. You can't even call them truffles. However, he did give her some for being smooth and surprisingly tasty. Now, the milk chocolate one also got a thumbs up for flavor, but with only two truffles instead of three, Chef Ramsay was left scratching his head. I've got two delicious truffles, but we're judging the holds of chocolates. Tough break, huh? Who said Master Chef was a cakewalk anyway? Anyway, Daniel was pretty satisfied, and he made sure to let Christina know how proud he was of his accomplishment. Let's take a look. When Christina dug into his dish, she noted that the white chocolate truffle had a good ratio and the flavors were on point. But there was one flaw she could pick on. It lacked smoothness. But what she found on cutting it open was even crazier. As she sliced into it, she found a chunk of chocolate lying inside. Split in there. Can you see that? Nah, not the kind of perfection she was looking for, but for the record, I'd eat it. I mean, it's chocolate after all, right? Either way, the judges were being pretty critical about the dishes, and they had to come up with one name for the elimination. And at the end of the day, guess who got eliminated? Okay, now this result has gotten me thinking. In what world was it justified? Like, how even? Sincerely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Seriously, I don't think it was bad, though. And this is surely one of those few times that makes you wonder if MasterChef is fair, but what this next home cook did is probably the most extreme kind of cheating I've ever seen on MasterChef. Say that again. But despite that, the end result left much to be desired. As you know, Season 12 brought back some culinary veterans for an all-star showdown, including some junior contestants too. But here's the burning question. Did the home cooks learn from their past mistakes? Well, they were about to find out. And what better trial by fire than having to feed the US Coast Guard? I mean, can you even imagine the pressure? Now, each team was tasked with preparing a hearty meal for over 100 hungry servicemen and women. The blue team, consisting of cooks from seasons 1, 7, faced off against the red team featuring home cooks from seasons 8, 11. Alejandro stepped up as captain for the red team, while Christian led the charge for the blue team. And the stakes? No one person from the losing team would face elimination. So the red team kicked things off with stakes, but hold up, Chef Ramsay caught wind that they were serving up cold cuts. Bloody table. The tray's cold, the steak's cold. I'm not gonna let you just send out. Not exactly the kind of hot start they were aiming for, right? Of course, Chef Ramsay, being the guy he is, wasn't pleased. He made sure they turned up the heat with some very choice words. And in a wild twist, he shuffled the Coast Guard over to the blue team's turf instead. But guess what? The blue team wasn't doing much better. Got it. We, got it. we, we need mash. We have no it's mash. Coming. Oh my god. The mashed potatoes were still cooking? And Chef Ramsay's frustration? Oh, it was practically radiating through the screen. Despite it all though, the initial feedback the diners gave seemed surprisingly positive for both teams. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that either. Anyway, in the midst of serving up food for the Coast Guard, a raw steak made an unwelcome appearance, and Chef Ramsay, in pure Ramsay fashion, did this. 
Oh, man. Well, thankfully, the fish were probably going to appreciate it much more than the Coast Guard. But brace yourself for the real shocker of the afternoon, Alejandro, undeterred by the steak now sleeping with the fishes, decided to play a risky game. He picked up a tray of steaks that had fallen down to the floor, by mistake, and tossed them right back on the grill. They're gonna get cooked. Seriously, how dumb can you be? Well, apparently, it was enough to kill the bacteria it picked up from the floor. At least according to our man Alejandro. So, no harm, no foul, right? Well, I shouldn't even need to mention Chef Ramsay's reaction. Captain, you better have a f Yeah, there was no coming back from that tongue lashing. Anyway, one user pointed out how Alejandro didn't learn anything since he was last on the show. Two of his teammates told him the meat wasn't done, that it was too rare, and were even proven right, and yet all he said to them was, trust me, trust me. The guy just doesn't listen. And then there was the whole drop steak thing. Anyways, with the chaos reaching epic proportions, Chef Ramsay took the opportunity to fire Alejandro as the team captain and appointed Michael to take charge instead. Just when the red team was careening over the edge of disaster, Chef Ramsay's quick thinking of appointing a better leader saved the day. Yeah, the man is built for that kind of thing. But most of the time, those warnings of his fall on some real deaf ears. And the result is never good. Well, what happened in Season 4, Episode 5, was the absolute epitome of that. The challenge was that the contestants had to form teams and whip up a feast for a bunch of pint-sized food critics. Now, Jordan took the reins as the captain of the blue team and was tasked with satisfying the taste buds of an entire elementary school. I'm sure all of you can understand how tall a task that is. In his lineup, he recruited Adriana, Kathy, Howard, Johnny, Savannah, Eddie, James, and Chrissy. Looking like a dream team, right? Well, on paper, you'd think so. Anyway, what was their mission, you ask? It was to create a menu that included turkey meatballs with pasta, green beans, and an apple crisp for dessert. Sounds delicious, right? But hold on, even before things really got going, Chef Ramsay had some major doubts. So that's, that's literally 600. You got it. I mean, feeding 300 kids? That's a whole lot of meatballs. We're talking 1,000 or more minimum. Chef Ramsay knew there was no way a bunch of amateurs could figure that out, even without a time crunch looming over them. 600 meatballs. 600 yeah. meatballs are gonna make? 600 meatballs. The pressure was on, the clock was ticking, and you couldn't help but wonder, would the blue team somehow be able to pull off a miracle? Well, I wouldn't be talking about it right now if they did, would I? The blue team stumbled right out of the gate, starting fashionably late. 10 more trays like that to get to 300 meatballs. And amidst the chaos, Chrissy, with some kind of culinary sixth sense, saw the impending catastrophe too. The time it's taken us making all these meatballs is just I mean, that's not a superpower or anything, it was just a basic knowledge a chef should have. Or like, basic math skills. Hopefully those kids were being taught better than them. Meanwhile, the judges, who were eagerly awaiting a feast, were dumbfounded by the sluggish progress of the blue team. More than 600 meatballs were on the line, and the team's sluggish speed wasn't exactly moving things along. As the clock kept ticking, the blue team found themselves in a tough situation where they, shockingly, couldn't make all those meatballs. And in a desperate attempt to salvage the sinking ship, a tactical shift was in order, and it needed to come fast. Start diversing and someone step up and take responsibility. No. Meanwhile, Chef Ramsay was completely livid. With every passing minute, his tolerance only dwindled further. And that's when Jordan came into the picture. And well, he had a weird solution. In a light bulb moment, he decided to switch gears and whip up a meat sauce instead. Don't even, hey, you don't need to roll them anymore. No more rolling, we're done rolling. But guess what? Things were about to get real saucy. With barely a minute left on the clock, the green beans were still having some major issues. One minute to go. Bean salad, I need it. But they were really just a symptom of the bigger issues at hand. In the grand scheme of these unfortunate events, a trifecta of poor decisions, a dash of terrible teamwork, and a generous sprinkle of abysmal leadership, the teammates crumbled under the pressure like never before. Now, moving on, here comes an episode where one of the contestants presented food that left Joe unimpressed. But you know what? Turns out, his sour attitude isn't restricted just to the adults. He's way meaner with the kids, and this was evident in one of the episodes of MasterChef Junior. And nope, I'm not even kidding. Okay, so just pay attention to Joe's face here for a moment, okay? And Yeah, he looks super pissed, doesn't he? But wait till you hear why? Decide to give me the one in the metal pan. Like, seriously, man? Is that what made you super mad, Joe? But here's the thing. During the challenge as time was ticking, the poor kid was struggling with a metal panel. Uh-oh. Well, that's a skill mistake he made right there. But Joe wasn't having it. He went crazy, demanding to know why the kid decided to serve with that specific plate. And the poor little chef, under a truckload of pressure, tried to give his best. No, 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 listen, listen, Kwani. 
everything in life is a decision. At this point, Chef Ramsay was beginning to wonder what the hell was up with Joe, because the man showed no signs of backing down. He kept pestering the little kid. Now, just beware, my friend, that every decision has ramifications. On the contrary, this is how a judge is supposed to ask a question. There, with your pastry crust, what happened? Um, it wasn't cold enough. And do you want to know what Chef Ramsay said? Well, check this out. Well done for not breaking down and disappearing. Absolutely. Handling pressure in the kitchen, especially for a kid, is no small feat. The resilience and determination they show, despite the challenges, are truly commendable. It's moments like these that highlight the incredible strength and skill these young chefs possess. Kudos to them for not giving up. But how would Joe understand? He's never had a formal culinary education after all. Anyway, you have to hear about what happened with Barry Nakash on MasterChef Junior Season 2. So, these kids were presented with a mystery box challenge and were given an hour to cook up some fancy dish. Barry flopped, ending up in the elimination round. Yeah, he had a rough day. Now, when it came to judging, Joe decided to drop some beautiful lines. Then go cook it all yourself at home. And as always, he's always got something more to share. You're wasting my time. And I don't like to have my time. Like, really, Joe? Instead of a simple, here's what's wrong, here's how to fix it, he had to go full-blown drama queen mode. I mean, couldn't he just stick to the important bits? And just when you thought he was done, he dropped another bomb. Hope you're not crying at home. Yeah. Thank you for nothing. Ugh, did you catch that? Thank you for nothing. Yeah. But, oh, it doesn't stop there. He added this sassy twist. Hope you're not crying at home. Like, seriously? The poor kid just lost. What's she supposed to do, throw a party? Joe was openly mocking her and dropping the bombshell right before the elimination. Talk about being brutal. But here's the thing, why do you even have to go so hard on kids? They're not professionals of any kind, and if at all anything, these kids display immense passion for cooking. It's something people with power, like Joe, need to encourage. But, well, of course he thinks he is above reason. And that's something we can never change. Anyway, moving on, in Season 6, Episode 10's Elimination Challenge, our gorgeous diva Tommy gave the contestants the challenge of making an elevated dish with PB and Jay at its heart. And she immediately dove into the challenge by forgetting the main ingredients from the pantry. It's mind-boggling how she managed to dodge elimination after emptying two full baskets from the pantry while missing everything that was essential. She then found herself relying on the kindness of fellow competitors. Hetol and Olivia generously offered some last-minute support. However, what followed was not a stroke of improvised genius, but rather a mismatched attempt at creativity that was just plain revolting. The discord between the ingredients was unmistakable, leading Chef Ramsay to voice his discontent and regret in the funniest possible way. Yay, it was a dish that was as strange and unappetizing as it sounded, but Shelly seemed bizarrely proud of it. Go figure. Basically, if you've watched this episode, you know that Sarah got kicked out because she talked back. No way was her dish worse than Shelly's though. Period. So what's worse according to you, mixing white chocolate with seafood or strawberries with meat? Shame the two were never on the same show at the same time. Anyway, while you think about that, I'm heading over to Season 4, when Lynn's Pink Poo and the $5 Walmart Bake Sale Elimination Challenge fell drastically short of meeting the judges' expectations, both in terms of flavor and aesthetics. Are you serious? Did you drive over it? Their reaction was nothing short of astonishment as the dish came walking up. The presentation seemed to draw the harshest criticism, leaving the judges wondering if they were getting pranked and the real fish would be brought out any second now. What is that? You know this is elimination, right? Calling it the worst dish served since the inception of the show, Chef Ramsay highlighted the million and one flaws that rendered the dish not just subpar, but downright nasty. On the other hand, Joe mocked him mercilessly, dangling the dish in front of him, saying, Might be a memento for you to take home. Emotional damage. After tossing it out like the garbage it was, he grabbed the empty plate in order to show the complete absence of any redeeming qualities. Completely mind blowing that Lynn made that. God, I don't even know what to say here. But the criticism was valid, and stemmed not just from the dish's horrid appearance, but also from its taste and overall execution. Eventually, Lynn found himself in the bottom three, alongside James and Chrissy, ultimately getting eliminated in that episode. Raise your hand if that surprises you. Hmm, no takers. I figured. Now, this reminded me of what happened in Season 11, when the top 10 were faced with their greatest challenge yet. Chef Ramsay revealed a mystery box that had California's finest ingredients, Santa Barbara prawns, sea urchin, wasabi, avocado, and grapefruit. What's more, these weren't just any ingredients, they were a tribute to the legendary guest judge, Jonathan Waxman. During the cook, Joseph, unfortunately, found himself in hot water, quite literally, when he threw the prawns on the heat with a whopping 35 minutes still on the clock. 
Chef Ramsay made it clear, cooking the hero ingredient way too early was a recipe for disaster, practically guaranteeing Joseph a one-way ticket to the bottom three. Dry. They're overcooked. And they're, 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 overcooked okay. and they're continuing to cook because this is hot. In a stroke of luck, Joseph managed to wrangle a few spare prawns from Anne and Lexi, but the situation had him rattled. The judges kept a watchful eye on Joseph's every move, assessing his frantic attempts to turn things around. But he somehow managed to stumble through making prawn pasta with uni cream, with avocado, grapefruit, and uni in grapefruit ponzu. But don't let that pretty appetizing description fool you. It was awful. Owning up to his mistakes, he openly acknowledged that the dish fell far from what he had envisioned conceptually. And the judges were lost for words. Top with grapefruit. Is that a garnish? I'm supposed to eat it? It's strange to me. Aaron's critique was blunt, and to the point, Joseph had missed the mark entirely. Completely missed the boat on the message here with this task. It was sloppy, with no evident synergy between the ingredients. But it was Waxman's assessment that stung the most. He essentially said it lacked that quintessential Californian charm, you know, the delicacy, the purity, the precision. He could only articulate his feelings as flummoxed. And how you arrived at this result, I'm flummoxed. As for Joe, well, he decided to rip him apart in his usual style. What a waste. Now, here comes another contestant who should have gotten the boot way earlier than she did. In Episode 8's Elimination Challenge, Yachisia presented her creation, a sweet and hot salmon dish paired with braised Swiss chard, Tuscan white beans, and a citrus cream sauce with some high hopes. However, Chef Ramsay's response was a stark contrast to her expectations. He criticized the dish, highlighting that she had twice the time Jeff had, but delivered something he deemed repulsive. Looks disgusting. Her smile quickly faded as Chef Ramsay responded with nothing but disappoint, expecting a dish of that caliber from someone who had merely 10 minutes to cook. His critique didn't stop there. He sliced into the salmon, but nothing positive about the quality. I serve better fish than my It was a cat astrophe. What's more, upon tasting it, he promptly spat it out, declaring that she had completely botched the dish. Sets me your flavor profile is unique. You cook. He made it clear that Yachisia's only hope was that someone behind her had made an even worse dish. That is the worst dish I've seen. Well, that's saying something. But sometimes the challenges the contestants face are totally unexpected. Like, what happened in Season 7, Episode 8's Elimination Challenge, when Chef Ramsay wheeled out some of the most appetizing proteins you can eat? I'm talking pig's ears, bull's testicles, chicken feet, lamb tongue, and pork tail. Safe to say, these ingredients would need a ton of love to make them work. Hey, please head up to the balcony. Anyway, with a tight 45 minutes on the clock, they dashed to the pantry for their awful ingredients. No, not awful. Awful. Anyway, Diane took a shot at making menudo from her tripe, boldly tweaking it for a crispier punch. Kate wants me to go home. She's going to fail miserably. Amidst the judges' deliberation, Chef Ramsay's concern over Diane's dish became apparent, and of course, he was right. When is he not? I'm like flustered right here, right now. Don't be flummoxed about the time, okay? Okay, okay. But oh boy, did she fumble. Aiming to wow with her spicy flavors, she presented her tripe menudo jazzed up with corn and jalapenos. And one of the top chefs here. Chef Ramsay had to literally excavate the dish to find the tripe, only to discover it as raw as the day it was born. We need to cook the salmon, because the salmon's raw, Jeff. Thank you. Since she had no idea how to fix the raw stomach lining, she simply minced it up into tiny pieces, buried it in her broth, and tried to play it cool. But Chef Ramsay wasn't a fool. Sadly for her, her half-baked effort wasn't enough to keep her from getting kicked off the show. But speaking of pressure, here's another contestant whose creativity suffered at the hands of the intense pressure of the kitchen. Chef. Describe your sausage, please. I'm talking about diamond. Unfortunately for her, though, her dish was far from a diamond in the rough. It was just rough. Now, she had decided to prepare a chicken and Asiago cheese sausage. And here I am in the MasterChef kitchen looking like a straight up. To complement the sausage, she crafted a quick bruschetta topping made with fresh tomatoes, garlic, basil, salt, and pepper. To add a final touch, she garnished the dish with a Parmesan crisp and some fried basil. And I garnish it with a little bit of Parmesan crisp and fried basil. As Diamond described her dish, she explained that she had chosen to use chicken thighs and included the chicken skin for extra flavor. What's the fat in there? Now, let's get down to analyzing the dish and see where it stands. If you ask me, the visual presentation was quite appealing, with bright colors that caught the eye. However, there were some doubts about the Parmesan crisp. I mean, of course, it looked good, but there were questions about whether it would enhance the dish overall. Actually, it looks quite bright. I'm not too sure about the Parmesan crisp, but I like the visual impact. But wait, because the direction of this judgment was about to take a turn for the worse. 
That doesn't look like it's cooked. Turns out, the judges were primarily concerned with the taste and texture of the sausage itself. They knew that the true test of a sausage lay in what was inside. It's actually worse. Yeah, that's crazy. So that thing it. barely Ugh. running around the garden. And like I said, what was inside was about as far from good as possible. Like, even a novice in the kitchen can tell you that she was living on borrowed time from the moment that sausage hit the plate. That's the sausage is raw. And well, what do you know? The judges made that abundantly clear to her. It's actually worse. Yeah, that's crazy. So that I thing's it. barely Ugh. running around the garden. Diamond felt her heart sink. She had worked so hard, but it seemed like all her efforts were about to go down the drain because of this one mistake. So there you have it, some of the worst dishes from MasterChef. Now, if you can think of more dishes that can beat the gross factor, then don't forget to drop them in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here, it's even crazier.